Welcome to Professional Cipher. Today we are going to explore Keras Functional API. Before jumping to the definition, first we should understand why we need Functional API in the first place. We all know sequential models. We all have started our machine learning journey with sequential models, right? Doing linear regression, logistical regression, convolutional neural networks, NLP and everything using sequential models. Here you can see an example of a sequential model. Going to Keras sequential class page, we can see the documentation and how we can define each layer and finally get a model. But the issue with sequential model is that it's a simple model. In real life cases, this doesn't help. Let's look at why it doesn't help. Here you can see what we do here is we keep on defining layers over layers over layers. So finally what we are getting is a stack of layers which is linear in its traversal. But do you really think that real life deep learning problems are so linear or we have only one set of inputs and a single output to focus on? No, right? So let's jump in and see an example why sequential model is not enough. Here I am presenting a medical problem. This is a hypothetical problem. Think that the inputs are doctor's reports, medicine names and scanned images. But the outputs you need are day still recovery and classifying the need of a treatment like what kind of a treatment should the patient get and how much days will he take. Understanding the data we have about the previous patient histories. So let's visualize the problem for a better understanding. Here you can see we have an image input, then we have text inputs, then also we have another text inputs. So this can't be done with sequential models, right? Because in sequential models, either we pass an image and get a classification or a value. But here we have image and a set of text and also two outputs to handle. Let's look why Keras Functional API will save the day. It allows multiple inputs and outputs. That itself is a big upgradation compared to the sequential model. We can choose to input different types of inputs like image, text, values, categories and get multiple outputs like classification problems, regression problems. It helps us to specific loss functions and weights for each output. So it's not just that we can pass multiple inputs and outputs, we can also handle their loss and weights of each layer independently. And the major part is that it returns a single model handling all these problems. So it's not like we have two outputs, we have to handle two models. No, we get everything as a single package as a model. That's a great thing, right? So let's jump into an example and explore how this works. Here you can see I have taken an example of a text and some numerical features to be precise nine. So what we have is a text and nine numerical features. And you can see the output, we have two outputs. One is a regression output that is we have to generate a value and the second output is a binary classification whether we have to find it's true or false. Let's just look at the functional API documentation you can visit for further more information. So here in the functional API we can see how we can import the libraries, how to use some of the basic examples, how to put inputs, how to define the model. But let's explore a better example with a real world problem. So as I mentioned the inputs and outputs, let's see how we are dealing with this, right? Things to do before. Yes, this is very important. We can't jump right into the model. First, we have to clean our data set. Then we have to pre-process. Pre-processing is very important, especially in natural language processing. We should downscale numerical features. Now, the next step should be obviously tokenizing. We have to tokenize our text corpus. Tokenizing can be simply explained as giving a value to a word. Here we give a specific number to a word and store it so that later we can use the number to represent the word. This allows us to do operations over them. Think like we have Python is simple. When we tokenize, what we do is we give Python 0 is 1 and simple number 2. So by that we can mathematically interpret these texts for better understanding. Now comes the magical model. Let's understand step by step. As you can see, we have two arguments, max length and embedding matrix. So what embedding matrix is, it's the glove matrix which we are using to embed our text corpus. Here the max length is the maximum length for the text input. 
let's jump right in we define the embedding dimension as 32 and first here is the most important thing you can see an input tag right that's how we define the inputs of a functional API model so here we are defining the shape of the input then we define the embedding layer as usual but then comes the difference here you can see that not just the layers are defined but we are providing inputs you can see embedding layer and then input one that's how sequential models are different we define only the layers but here we define what goes into each layer so that we can handle it at each layer and we have full control over the input and output then we use LSTM layers here I have used bidirectional LSTMs for a better understanding of the text feature after the second LSTM layer you can see that we define the second input the second input is our ordinary numerical features which we use in the beginning stage of machine learning for regression examples so now that we have defined our two input features here comes the best part about functional API here you can see a concatenate tag right yes here's where the magic happens we have the LSTM layer 2 till there we have done our NLP operations so what LSTM layer 2 contains is a sequence of values basically we have converted the text features into numerical features now what we have is two set of numerical features so we have to concatenate them to make a single set right so we store the concatenated values to the variable merge from here we do a basic dense layer problem but in two ways in one way we achieve the regression output and in other way we achieve the classification output in the regression dense 1 2 3 you can see that what we are inputting we are starting with merge as input then we keep on inputting the layer by layer and finally we are putting activation as sigmoid so that we get in the range of 0 to 1 right similarly for classification we define layers start with the input of merge layer then finally we end up with the activation of sigmoid even though the regression and classification layers seem similar in terms of architecture their weights and everything will change once the learning starts so we have defined our model it's the time to complete it here you can see the model tag this is where we define the model what all were our inputs what all are our outputs so we can see that we are passing in an array so the array will handle our inputs so in the inputs we can see input 1 and input 2 in the outputs we can see output 1 and output 2 by this we have completed defining our model and finally you can use the print model dot summary to see how it looks finally we return the model i know this is where the keras functional api ends but I will show you the model fitting and compilation so that you can get a point to point understanding on how to use this. Here is our model summary. You can see that we start with two input layers and we end with two output layers, then three and then seven. You can see the in between operations happening. And let's jump to the model compilation and fitting. Here you can see we call the function and we get the model into the variable model then here is the important part here as we have two outputs to handle we define the losses as a dictionary with namely the layer name we saw in the previous slide the, our last layers are named dense 3 and dense 7 so we define the dictionary with keys dense 3 and dense 7 and values as the losses we need mean squared error for the regression and binary cross entropy for our binary classification problem then we define our optimizer then we pass in the variables for the compilation then we fit the model model fitting is also very important as we have multiple inputs and outputs we should be very careful while handling for x we pass in both the inputs together similarly for the y with a small different we pass in as a dictionary same as the case of losses so that when we call the key value of dense 3 we get the corresponding input loss function and everything so we can see how we have defined the inputs and outputs and then we define the validation data similarly finally we define the epoch and verbose by this we have found a solution for multiple input and output problems using keras functional api i hope the video helped you to get into a new territory of machine learning and explore more so be curious and keep exploring
Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to Professional Cipher.